This is the Transportation TV News Update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting. A massive winter storm stretched across more than 30 states, affecting 100 million people this week. Major highways and airports were closed, and power was knocked out for hundreds of thousands of people. The Iowa State DOT shared these pictures of National Guard members in Humvees. The Guard followed State Department of Transportation snowplows into hot spots, helping the Highway Patrol to rescue more than 30 people and several pets from vehicles stranded on snow-covered roadways. These Texas DOT photos show snow plows operating in a tandem truck line, clearing ice and snow in the Dallas district. TxDOT employees came in from other districts to help keep traffic moving in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 20 inches of snow fell in several states. 20.2 inches fell in Chicago, the third highest snowfall total on record. Schools closed there for the first time in 12 years. And by Thursday, Oklahoma DOT was still digging out, and some interstates had reopened. Meanwhile, the monster storm headed northeast, breaking many snowfall records. In New York City, 56 inches of snow has fallen this winter in Central Park. The average is just 22 inches. More snow means tighter state budgets. In Rhode Island, for example, RIDOT has spent $14.9 million on snow removal this season. That's nearly $5 million more than they'd budgeted for. In other news on Capitol Hill, House Republicans on Thursday gave more clarity to the size of the cuts they want to make in domestic spending this year. $100 billion had been the target. However, the House Budget Committee announced that the new goal was $58 billion in cuts in non-security funding for the rest of the year. No matter how deep the House cuts turn out to be, any measure passed in the House must also gain approval of the Democratic-controlled Senate and President Obama. Democrats are expected to argue, among other things, that such cuts could hurt the economy and cost jobs. In other Capitol Hill news, the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee Chairman, Florida Republican John L. Micah, announced the locations for a series of national field hearings and public forums. The committee will seek input on how to best fund and reform the nation's highway, transit, and safety programs through passage of a long-term reauthorization bill. A complete list of the hearing locations can be found on the House TNI Committee website. And finally this week, it's called the transportation funding gap, the difference between current revenues available for surface transportation and capital needs each year. The gap, according to a congressional commission, amounts to about $137 billion. In recognition of the need to discuss a broad range of tools to close this gap, the Ashto Center for Excellence in Project Finance convened a number of transportation experts, including Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat from Oregon, House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee Chairman John Micah, Republican from Florida, Representative Earl Blumenauer, Democrat from Oregon, and former Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell for a seminar late last year that resulted in a new study. It's the first time we, ASHTO, through our finance center, have been able to sponsor for congressional staff comprehensive concepts on both the condition of our surface transportation infrastructure funding and secondly, a series of alternative concepts that they could consider in making decisions about future revenues. The center also enhanced its website with a new interactive map with detailed state-by-state -state transportation data. To view both the form report and the map, visit the Ashto Center for Excellence in Project Finance website at www.transportation-finance.org. That's the Transportation TV News Update. Thanks for watching.